Ever wonder if there's intelligent life elsewhere in the universe? Well, I have. I've been wondering since I was a kid. My name is Ruben Langdon, and on March 29, 2007, in the middle of the day, I saw a number of strange objects in the sky. Coincidentally, I was working on the film Avatar at the time, playing an alien. And ever since then, I've been on a quest. A quest to find out if aliens really do exist. And if so, are they here? With us? If beings of higher intelligence are here, what is their purpose? Why don't they make themselves more known? Why the secrecy? I've asked these questions to many experts, yet each seems to have a different theory. So I thought to myself, why not ask the aliens directly? So that's what I set out to do. Well, sort of. Oh, yes, hello, dear. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and it is a pleasure and an honor to have the opportunity to connect with you. So in our short time today, we think we're going to cover a pretty uh, lengthy uh, or a pretty substantial amount of ground. So we're very, very excited. So thank you for the opportunity to connect. Absolutely. Thanks for, for being here with us. Um, yes, a number of, of questions uh, on a number of different levels, but this may be right uh, out of left field a little bit, but can you explain um, reincarnation and the, the mechanism and why, why does that work that way? Well, in part, the question is flawed. Okay. All right. <laughs> and here's why. Because you are, you're asking the question from a third dimensional standpoint in mm -hmm. which you are looking at time as a constant mm -hmm. where there is a linear progression and, and it's not. Uh, time is an illusion and it's simply a marker for events. So when you all think of reincarnation, you think, all right, well, I have a lifetime that started in 1000 BC, and then I had another one in, say, um, the 1700s, and then another one in the early 1900s, and then here I am today. So you think there is a linear progression, and really there isn't, because what you consider to be the past or what you consider to be the future is all going on concurrently. Mm -hmm. And so what you are choosing to do is take your soul's essence and harness it, focus it to a specific now moment. And by doing that, as you enter into 3D, you create a physical structure for yourself, all right? You create the body mm -hmm. and, and you incarnate, if you will. But that part of you, that soul's essence, can also then project itself out, fracture itself out into other lifetimes in order to have experience. So one of the greatest issues for you all when it comes to your sense of um, progression, when it comes to your sense of deservedness, when, when you talk about karma, is that you think that you have to start at the bottom and work your way up. There is this idea of hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And because you're playing in a game of duality, because you've entered into a dimension in which you have light, dark, positive, negative, male, female, you've got both extremes. You can't have one without the other because of the nature of the game. Mm -hmm. When you fracture down into this dimension, you have oneness, which is happening up at the source level. And then as soon as you enter into dimensional structure, you have some level of separation, some some polarity. And when you get to 3D, the polarities are pretty far apart. So 
you have hierarchy all the way down through the dimensional structure. Here you really get sucked into the idea of it. Right. But there is an aspect of you that is already part of source energy. You, you already are one with all that is and ever will be and with the infinite. Mm -hmm. So it's not that if you come down here and you have a lifetime in which you play the dark end of the spectrum, the, the next life you are, you are condemned or punished to, you know, take a step back and have a harder life or that you are, you know, then going to have to play uh, a particular role mm -hmm. um, that may not be so pleasant. It doesn't really work that way. At the soul level, you say, all right, I'm going to go down and I'm going to play the perpetrator so that somebody else can play the victim because mm -hmm. you can't have one without the other. Sure. And you have that vibrational experience and then you say, all right, well, now I understand. And now I want to try it again from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So let's play the victim this time. And you will contract with other beings and oftentimes the same beings to play that opposite role so that each gets a turn. Mm -hmm. And this can be going on concurrently as you structure your lifetimes and the kinds of vibrations that you want to experience. So... You also choose times in history, if you will, uh, that suit your needs. So it is possible for you to have a future life first and then put yourself back in time, as it were, to put yourself in a setup in which the conditions are right for, say, your oppression, if you will, if you yeah. want to play a victim. Sure. So, you know... It's not neat and tidy. <laughs> We're giving you more of an expanded perspective of what it is. We could give you the linear answer, mm -hmm. but we don't want to do that any longer. We want to shatter your version of reality in a sense. Um, we don't want to leave you feeling overwhelmed, mm -hmm. but we do want to break you out of the box. So in that sense, uh, having that information uh, the whole karmic wheel that's talked about in Buddhism and other religions, is that just a misunderstanding then of well, how karma works? Or well, is, is say, karma even real or how does that, can you? Can in you a sense, that? we would say it is real. Okay. When it comes to your idea of karma, there is a lot of manipulation that's gone on in mm -hmm. the, the explanation of it. And it was used to control mm -hmm. because there was a lot of violence going on. Right. So from the human 3D level, from the ego level, this is how it was interpreted. But because you're down in density and you're playing this game of separation or the illusion of separation, you still want to present yourselves with some of the concepts. Mm -hmm. So you're giving the information to yourselves in the best way that you can process it from this level. So we would say when you think of the karmic wheel, it is a story or a version that is the best that you can process from that third dimensional mental level. Mm -hmm. Is it how things really work? No. Okay. It's as close as you can get from your the process of the linear mind. So if the time is, you just explained time is an illusion uh, and kind of all of these lives are happening simultaneously, um, would it be safe to say that what we're learning in this lifetime right now is affecting prior lifetimes or future lifetimes. Absolutely. So, okay. And not only your lifetimes, mm -hmm. but also all life oh, in right. the universe. And this is in part why it's such a special time that you are going through this particular period mm -hmm. because there is so much growth that is happening mm -hmm. and you are really having to learn and work with compassion. Mm -hmm. And how you learn and work with compassion is sent off to all life throughout the universe. And the information is a game changer. And why we say this is because Earth is kind of a melting pot for mm -hmm. galactic issues. Earth is unlike any other planet uh, in your system, in, in your galaxy, really. It's a grand experiment in which genetic material from thousands of worlds was deposited in order to play out some of the galactic issues on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. And along with all this, this genetic material are all the emotional components, all the things that you have experienced Mm -hmm. in all of those lifetimes, and, and we call Earth the planet of emotion. So you've got a huge range to work with. And 
it is in a sense a blessing and a curse mm-hmm. in that you have many emotions to kind of sequence together in order to get your way out of the lower densities in order to elevate your consciousness, but also because they are so extreme, you also can fall into the trap of getting stuck Mm -hmm. in a sense. So as you have both experiences of the positive and the negative in in this realm, Mm -hmm. you hold a lot more compassion because all of you have had those times where you felt that lower resonance, that lower frequency, that lower emotion, and you know that it can feel really challenging and really hard. So the way that you experience compassion and the intensity of that particular frequency is so much stronger than it is experienced in the higher realms that you actually Hmm. are teaching the rest of us throughout the entire universe, including the higher realms, how to experience compassion with more depth. Mm. I understand. And that's sometimes hard for humans to kind of wrap their mind around Mm. because, again, you have this hierarchical idea that beings in the higher dimension are better than. Right. We're just different. We're just playing in another uh, game. We're just playing with a different set of rules and having a different kind of experience. But remember, as we said at the beginning, we are all part of source energies. And uh, and as such, you are able to access that information at any time. Hmm. It's never something that is separate or kept from you. You limit it from yourself as you play down in the game in order to play the game. From from a Palladian point of view, point of view or perspective is it can i mean it must be comical how uh how us humans get so emotionally attached and involved and uh you know into our emotions and our stories is that is that do you find that well we wouldn't necessarily say comical but we would say it's fascinating (laughs) you know we're fascinated by it and we don't always understand it And this is a lot of the work that you all do at night Mm -hmm. when you're out of your bodies. You are educating the rest of us. Mm -hmm. You will have meetings with different groups that you work with. Sometimes there are groups in other lifetimes that have an awareness of the experiment of the game that's going on on Earth. And Mm -hmm. you may be part of that species Mm -hmm. or part of that energetic collective. And so, you know, they'll, they'll review the day with you. Mm. And they'll look at it and say, you know, you had this opportunity to completely uh, alter your course and, you know, bring a lot more joy into your life. And we don't really understand why you didn't take it. Mm -hmm. It seems so easy. And you explain to them, well, because in that moment I was gripped with this horrible fear. Well, what's going to happen? What about money? What about security? What about safety? And they don't necessarily understand looking at it from a slightly more logical perspective. Correct, right. So there's a lot of explanation that goes on to to teach about this frequency of emotion. Mm-hmm. Well, in that sense, so, and and I, from my understanding, I guess is is it's all part of the you mentioned the great great experiment. This experiment, correct me if I'm wrong, is is this choice to have forgotten where we come from and who we are and incarnate in this world as it is, uh, and that's I guess. The great question is why, why, why have we done this? Why have we forgotten this? And and what are we doing here? Is that it? Is that why we're here? Well, the sole purpose, you know, for any incarnational or or any vibrational experience, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, meaning, you know, we don't want to say incarnation because it's more than just incarnating because mm-hmm. that that term means literally taking on form. Right. But. You know, it's about experience, period. Mm-hmm. It's about exploration. It's about curiosity. Mm. And the game itself, the 3D game, and, and we're not talking just about Earth, but we're talking about the third dimensional game. Mm-hmm. It was created because we all wanted to. Sure. We thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting, you know, if we could forget who we are? Mm-hmm. Because from our level, and, and frankly, from, from the fifth dimensional level and up, we have an awareness that we are part of source energy. 
we have an awareness that we can perceive ourselves as an individuated consciousness as well as collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it's a choice. But we'll always have that awareness. So it it is a different game when you you think, hmm, well, what if I didn't know that? Mm -hmm. How would that change my vibrational experience? How would that change the choices that I make? And so this is in part why the game was set up. And it is an illusion because it's impossible to have separation. Mm -hmm. And so as you came down through the dissension process, and it was a dissension process, it, it wasn't that you had to start your incarnational process at the 3D level and work your, set, your, your way back up. Mm -hmm. As you came down and said, all right, well, let's create this structure. Let's create this game. Let's enter into it. It was very difficult for you all to hold that lower resonance. Mm -hmm. You kept remembering that you were part of the collective energy and that you could easily manipulate your reality. And so out of the dimensional game, you go. So the mind was set up. The ego was set up to create repetitive programs of thought in order to hold you into the illusion Mm -hmm. And so now as you spiral down, the illusion, the programs, the habits, they get stronger and stronger as you're denser. Right. All right. So as you go back up, it's, this, it's you know, the exact opposite. You remember more and more. And, and so, you know, that's the whole point of the ego is to allow you the illusion of the game to have a different perspective of a vibrational experience. This different perspective on uh, it seems the denser it gets or maybe I'm not using the right terminology but the the more negative side of things it does seem self-destructive um, you know we've I, I've heard stories of Atlantis or other civilizations here on earth or uh, otherwise that end up destroying themselves is it because they're in, they're listening to the ego too much or they're, they're too dense? Is that is that a possibility? Yes. Yeah, so right now you're moving through a sector of space that has high vibrational energy that supports you to, to elevate your consciousness. It's a sector of space that sometimes you refer to as the photonic band or the photonic belt. It's got mm -hmm. high vibrational signatures that help you to integrate all the lessons that you learned through your cycle and and it kind of prepares you for the, the next step up, the next cycle as you're spiraling up. Mm -hmm. So with Atlantis, there were many of the same issues that you're working on now and you wanted to give it a whirl kind of as a test run to see, you know, how can we process? What are some of the hurdles we're going to have? Because remember, time doesn't exist and the higher part of you, the higher self that is the one projecting into these different periods, um, it knows, it has that greater perspective. And so, yes, it was a trial run. And there are many things that get played out again, uh, a lot of issues around genetic manipulation, mm -hmm. a lot of issues about inner technology versus outer technology, mm -hmm. um, some issues around artificial intelligence, although a lot of those issues are coming from other star systems as well. Mm -hmm. So they're getting triggered and activated again. Cloning is another one mm -hmm. that, that happens um, to reoccur from Atlantis. And you're learning how to integrate. You're learning how to release some of the past trauma, if you will. We'll say past. We'll use past and future for, the, sure. for you throughout our conversation. But um, it prepared you. Mm -hmm. And it's information that you can access to say, all right, this is where following this particular frequency led to so that you don't have to recreate it again if you don't want to. Well, the, the beings at that time, I'm, I'm sure there were some survivors f from Atlantis, were, were there not? Yes, many. Um, so if they remembered that experience... Moving forward, wouldn't they uh, obviously try to avoid this, making the same mistakes? Well, there was also the awareness mm -hmm. that you were going to fall into a period of sleep. Oh, All okay. right, the vibration was was spiraling down. And and these beings were aware of this at this time. Yes, okay. some. And so there were things that were put into place. Um, there were recordings mm -hmm. of information that were put into crystals mm -hmm. and many of you are remembering 
that, ah, wait, I had a lifetime in Atlantis and I feel really drawn to work with crystals or I feel really drawn to work with grids or the earth or there are bits and pieces of information. Perhaps it's science related. There may be something about biology or there may be something about working with sound that you feel drawn to from that lifetime. And many of you who have incarnated into this particular time frame who were shall we say, among the first to awaken, you've had lifetimes in Atlantis. And so you are re-initializing some of those programs and memories so that you can move beyond uh, beyond that um, level of distraction into Mm -hmm. a more harmonious result. So other than these physical structures and crystals and uh, I guess on a flesh and blood level, I guess, has there been any actual surviving beings, beings in the flesh and blood who have survived, who are able to tell that story? Most have have departed. I see. Yes, but we will say that their counterparts or other aspects are here again in new bodies. Um, Were the Palladians involved in the Atlantis experiment? Some, very early on. Okay. There were three high civilizations of Atlantis, and you're talking about, you know, the first being 300,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. So we had some participation, but there were also other uh, star systems that mm-hmm. had a more prominent, um, more direct contact. Okay. All right, the Lyrans being among them, mm-hmm. and the Lyrans uh, participated and, and started, if you will, uh, Lemuria. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of that energy that's that's present. And then as you went a little further along, some of the Syrian and Orion energy showed up. Mm. And are the Palladians involved? Uh, obviously, we're having this conversation. So is there more of an interaction w- with uh, today's civilization in the Palladian collective or the Palladian energy than in the Atlantis time? In some ways, yes. Okay. Um, you know, there are lots of different species in the Pleiades, and okay. Oh, okay. we reside in many different dimensions. So oh, it's it's not that we're just ninth dimensional mm-hmm. or fifth dimensional, but there are there are varying um, games being played out in the Pleiades in different dimensions. So right now, fifth dimensional Pleiadians, mm-hmm. ninth dimensional Pleiadians, and occasionally the eighth. It's it's a bit rare for the eighth to show up. They're, they're observing, but they're standing back. Um, the fifth and ninth are the, the two dimensions in which you experience beings from the Pleiades. And it's a very varied system. Mm-hmm. So you have humanoids, mm-hmm. you've got reptilians, um, you've got a lot of what you would consider to, today to be hybrids. Um, you know, there's kind of been a blending that's mm-hmm. gone on over the many eons. And, and when we talk about that, we're talking about the physicals now. Sure. We're not talking about the light beings. So this would be a lower density or a lower dimensional uh, version of the Pleiadians? Well, we would say fifth dimensional Pleiadians. Okay. And, and as we said, sometimes it's about um, humanoids, sometimes mm-hmm. it's about reptilians, and then sometimes you'll have interspecies breeding, mm-hmm. all right? Um, there's some AI in the Pleiades. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, we mentioned the artificial intelligence several times, and, and part of the reason that we're doing that is because this is a bigger issue, um, especially when it comes to persecution and the right to have your opinion and to have your existence challenged. Mm-hmm. A lot of those um, issues are coming up for humanity again, and that was a big AI issue. Mm. So... Yeah, I just uh, recently rewatched this movie called uh, Cloud Atlas, which uh, addresses... Uh, one of the key themes in the movie was reincarnation, uh, but then, uh, the, or multiple lives in simultaneous times, but then uh, this idea of AI or a, uh, and, and the rights that uh, are given to that artificially created species. So, um, yeah, these are t- 
themes in our science fiction in in the current world. So yes, and it's also a big trauma that mm-hmm. is still uh, there that that is looking for integration, and mm-hmm. so you're trying to play it out on a on a smaller scale. Right. Uh, a lot of the struggle and strife with the AIs started in Lyra, mm-hmm. and you know they were forced out into a, another galaxy. Uh, many of them are now in the Andromedian galaxy. Mm. So we just wanted to mention it. Some of that energy is in the Pleiades Mm -hmm. at the fifth dimensional level. Um, There are also uh, bird people, if you will, Mm -hmm. uh, that exist in the Pleiades. And, you know, those those groups, uh, that species has visited your planet before. All right. About 20,000 years ago, there was a much greater presence and concentration of uh, those species uh, energy here on the planet. And, and all these different species, I, I guess uh, my mind's being blown today because we all have these uh, images of, OK, Palladians look like this. Greys look or Zetas look like this. And, you know, it's great. And um, thank you for clarifying that there's within the Pleiades system, there's all these different creatures and, and, and uh, forms. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, well, we just want to say one other thing here. Think about it this way. Mm-hmm. You know, we mentioned that Earth has genetic material from thousands of worlds. Mm-hmm. So think about all the variations of species that exist on your planet. Mm-hmm. And many of those have what you would consider to be a higher um, a higher representation, a more intelligent species, sure. all right, a conscious species. Right. Uh, it's just kind of, you know, they've taken a secondary role, if you will, on this planet for now. But mm-hmm. that information is being donated to the collective consciousness because those beings are represented. So all of that history, spiders, for example, mm-hmm. uh, the spiders in other sectors of the galaxy are quite intelligent, they're highly organized, and they're quite aggressive. Mm. And, um, you know, you've had wars with the spiders and the fairies, and they have taken over many different planets. They're very conquering. And this still shows up in the collective psyche. Mm -hmm. Many of you have huge fear of spiders. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it from a logical standpoint, for the most part, most of them are not poisonous. Mm-hmm. And they're very, very tiny. <laughs> right. And yet your fears around them are very, very large. Right. It's because this information is stored in the collective record. Interesting. Yeah. More so than, yeah, some other, there's even nastier looking insects that we, you know, beetles and things like that, that we're not afraid of. Yes. But, yeah. Yes. Interesting. Some Something that, you know, I've heard, you, we hear through uh, our different materials, movies and whatnot, the grand experiment and the the manipulation that are uh, has been done f- currently within our media and government, but even further back, you hear the story of the uh, Nephilim and the Anunnaki, and that's what created uh, humans in this kind of enslavement matrix. Um, can you, in a in a easy way? Uh, can you discuss the Anunnaki experience without letting people know about, without having them think we're victims to this experience, I guess? A lot of ground to cover with yeah, this that's, one. Yeah, that's a, it's and a, lot and of that's a big and question layers. too. So, yes, there were beings uh, from the Sirius star system mm-hmm. who participated in events in this solar system, and they are still participating in events on this, in this solar system. At the time of Atlantis, the fall of Atlantis, they were participating on Mars, all right? And many of the Atlanteans had interactions with them, mm-hmm. direct interactions. And with the fall of Atlantis, it was a good opening for them to once again participate in Earth activities. They had participated much earlier and kind of abandoned the project in a sense. And in many ways, the consciousness at varying times on the planet was too high for them to do exactly what they wanted to do. So we are going to give you an answer. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you two versions. And the first first is that it's important to take the bits and pieces that resonate with you Mm -hmm. and leave the rest behind. We are giving you a version of history. It is not the only version of history. History is always colored by perspective. 
Mm-hmm. Truth is always colored by perspective. The only place that truth isn't colored by perspective is up at source level. And at that point, it's nothing but raw data. Mm-hmm. And you have every variation and nuance of every perceived recording of an event there is. Mm-hmm. And so you literally choose the one that you want that fits with creating the vibrational experience that you want to have. Mm-hmm. So... If you want to have an experience in which you get to play the victim, you're going to choose a version of history that supports that. Right. And, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. We want to take just a moment to talk about how time and creation work, because if you don't understand this, you know, the rest of it falls a bit flat. Right. So every now moment that you experience is based upon an agreed-upon set of circumstances that you collectively agree to. All right, these are the things that have gone on on a planet. We've had World War I, we've had World War II, Mm -hmm. this has gone on, that has gone on. And then you have your own personal history that you say, this is my past, this is where I grew up, this is the kind of relationship I had with my mother, my father, my siblings. And what you do is move from now moment to now moment to now moment. So you move from agreed-upon set of circumstances Mm -hmm. And then you string them all together and give yourself the illusion of time. Mm -hmm. And you do this, and we didn't talk about it earlier, but we feel like we need to bring it up now because these are key concepts in understanding and bringing yourself out of the victim mentality. And whenever we talk about um, a lot of the quote-unquote control mechanisms that are going on on the planet, Mm -hmm. when you understand the structure that, that's underneath it, mm-hmm. you can move out of that victim consciousness. Right. So one of the beautiful things of 3D was the illusion of linear time. And part of the reason you time exists is because, as we said at the beginning, as you enter into density and you create these programs of the mind to keep you in the third dimension, these ideas and perceptions of limitation... If you didn't experience immediate manifestation, you were able to keep yourself in the game longer. If you did immediately manifest, you'd have a lower thought, you, you'd create it as a reflection, and you'd, you would most likely create a death scenario, out you go, and you have to start again. You'd have to incarnate mm-hmm. again. Okay. So the lower the frequency, the slower you actually move through time. Mm. Your scientists haven't quite caught this yet. Yeah. But frequencies don't move through time and space at the same rate. Yeah. No, it def- definitely feels like we're in time is speeding up yes. for everybody. Yes, and that's because that. you're vibrating right. at a higher rate. So everything is compressing. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're creating something out of a lower vibrational stance, all right, uh, and it is amplified by extremes of emotion, either extreme joy or and if it's a lower emotion, it's usually an extreme fear, Mm -hmm. then it is pulsed out with great intensity and reflected back to you. And the lower vibrations take longer so that you have an opportunity to elevate your consciousness so that you don't have to create that lower vibrational experience. You don't have to create the accident or the death, Mm -hmm. all right? You, You can elevate yourself because in order to Uh, create, you pulse out frequency, the universe matches the form, and you have to be in resonance with it in order to experience it. Mm -hmm. So now, as you're creating moment to moment, you, from the third dimensional level, only are perceiving one version of reality, but there are multiple and infinite versions of reality going on concurrently. Mm -hmm. And this is the beauty of 3D, that you get to limit Limit it down to one, and you don't see what's coming. Right. So it also affects your choice in frequency. And, and just to jump in, is this this is on an individual level and collective, or is it one or the other? Or well, it's in a sense both because right. you have again infinite variations. So think of it as the now moment being a circle, mm-hmm. and then the agreed upon set of circumstances is a triangle or two triangles is a big one for the collective consciousness and then a small one for your personal choices. You could actually move to a now moment that has a vastly different resonance because each of these triangles has its own unique frequency. Mm -hmm. And it's a blending of the collective energy and your personal energy. And you could put yourself on a version where, say, World War II didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's possible. But 
there is an aspect of you that won't do it because to enter into that reality, the result of that frequency is going to be so vastly different, mm -hmm. it would destroy the illusion of the game for you. Right. So you wouldn't choose it. Mm. Now, you decide to project yourself on a now moment that you can be of the most service. Mm -hmm. You may find that you are on a version where, say, the collective is participating with a lot of lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that your personal reality has to be one of misery and suffering. Mm -hmm. You can experience joy and lightness, and that is often the service that you're bringing, is showing others how to experience more light and joy. It's mm -hmm. what needs to be brought to that now moment. So you can put yourself on something that is vastly, vastly different, but most of the time you make small uh, steps. Mm -hmm. Think of it as a giant sphere, and then on this sphere are all of the now moments. It covers the mm -hmm. entire sphere, and you can go anywhere um, in any direction that you want. But for the sake of the game and the continuity of the illusion of the game, you make small changes. Sometimes you all will make bigger leaps, mm -hmm. all right? And often you will see this in healing. Okay. That you will choose a now moment in your personal reality, that tumor or that um, genetic distortion is no longer present in a matter of moments. Mm. You will put yourself on another now moment in which that isn't the agreed upon set of circumstances. Mm. It has changed and you experience that as the, the miracle. Mm. So that's on an individual base, but collectively too, the rest of us have to kind of agree for that miracle to happen, no? Or? Well, think of it this way. There is a, a now moment in which your personal circumstances are identical, mm -hmm. and then there is one in which the collective says, all right, well, that's possible, and there's one that says, mm, we're, that's not so possible. Mm. So you put yourself on the one that is in resonance with that, if that is what you wish, and it is of service to the collective as well. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I think I get it. So, in a sense, you are never bound to have an experience because that's what the collective wants. You are right. putting yourself on a now moment in which the collective frequency and your personal frequency are in alignment with your desired creation as a creator being. Mm -hmm. Because every choice, whether you go left or right, is another now moment. It's just which one do you choose to focus on? Right. This is hard for you because you, you all have right. a difficult time thinking that large. But, but or, I guess the question I have is, Beings who, I mean, I'm just, for example, I'm going to use the Anunnaki. Yes. <laughs> uh, do they understand these concepts? Do they understand them, but yet still make these negative choices in order to grow, in order for us? Because I, I, I relate it to uh, the unconscious version of me that's putting me into some suffering so I can make a le so I can learn a lesson. Yes. Consciously I don't want to do that, but unconsciously it's happening. Do do these other beings are they I guess my question is are they aware that they are doing what they're doing? Well, let's say first that you are never required to make an, a quote-unquote negative choice okay. and you're never required to sacrifice for mm -hmm. the collective good. Okay. There is a version in which all can benefit mm -hmm. and all are served. You, things only have a negative value because that's what you assign to it. Okay. So it is a neutral choice. Mm -hmm. And from the soul level, that's how you, you approach it, how mm -hmm. you perceive it, that right. it is neutral. The ego says, oh, that's negative. I don't want that. No. I see. So you can perceive it from the ego level where it's polarized. Mm -hmm. It's either positive or negative. Right. When you enter into the space of co-creator, which is your heart center, you can perceive it from a very neutral stance where you can see, oh, look how this was a benefit to myself from my education right. and benefit to others because they got to play out this role and they have a chance to grow and expand as well. Right. So when you put yourself in your heart center and you can perceive reality from that level, everything has more of a neutral stance mm -hmm. to it. Um, you can perceive it as being under the umbrella of positive and negative, right. but you have no judgment about it. It's sure. just an, it's just a unbiased perspective. Right. Now we do want to talk and, and bring it back around to the Anunnaki here, yes. and and there are a couple of assumptions that get made. Mm -hmm. When you are working in the higher realms, the idea is again that the higher realms are better. Right. That it's a utopia. 
right. that everything's perfect, <laughs> and it's not. It's okay. just different. Right. As you go up in dimensional structure, there isn't as much. Ex there aren't as many. Um, the extremes are not as extreme. Okay. So where we're at in the ninth dimension, we still have polarity, mm -hmm. but we say it would be the difference between, say, gray and light gray, mm -hmm. as opposed to black and white and 5,000 shades of gray in between, which is what you experience. I see. And we still have disagreements, mm -hmm. but we don't blow each other up about them. Mm. We don't kill each other over them. Right. We simply say, all right, well, here's my perspective. And we look at it again more from that heart-centered space of right. where do we want to go collectively and where do I consciously, as an individuated conscious, because that can be still perceived, or you can choose to perceive it from the collective level. Where do we as a collective or where do I as an individuated consciousness that is part of a collective wish to go? Mm -hmm. And then we, we make choices based on that. Um, and sometimes we make multiple choices at once and watch them unfold all at once. Mm. Take a breath. Anytime we start talking about time, you all immediately leave your bodies. Yeah, it's very difficult. It's where... So feel it. Yeah. Don't think about it. And, mm -hmm. and if it's a concept that you just keep going around and around on that hamster wheel, mm -hmm. see it as an orb of light and allow it to drop down into your chest and just allow the information to unfold there in your heart center. Because there is a part of you that knows inherently that mm -hmm. this is how things are. Right. It's how they're created. This is how it works in every other dimension. The one that you're in is very atypical. Mm -hmm. So just allow it to sit there and stop trying to think about it with your mind and allow yourself to feel your way through it. Mm -hmm. So now these beings, they are primarily fifth dimensional and you can play in multiple dimensions. Um, some of them are also fourth dimensional. Fourth dimension is very unique because you can run either 3D or 5D rules to the game. Okay. Now, with the Anunnaki, you know, th they often get a bad rap. They, you know, it would be yeah. like saying everybody from Earth is one way mm -hmm. and you're lumping everybody together. And you all do that to make yourselves feel safe, to feel right. like you understand what something is. Sure. And there are are only a few that have manipulated power mm -hmm. in in such extremes. For the most part, and there was a split among the Anunnaki themselves right. uh, about how they wanted to go forth and how they wanted to interact. And so there is definitely a rift between sec, you know, beings who are from that system, mm -hmm. from that planetary body, Nibiru. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we were saying, some of them were on Mars at the time of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And and then once Atlantis fell, they started playing around a bit more with you around 13,000 years ago and, and working in a different way than they previously had on the planet. And they took a less formal role, a less physical role, mm -hmm. and were... Mm, well, to put it this way, manipulating things from a higher dimensional level. Mm -hmm. Now, this helps you at the galactic level for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. It helps you to introduce interdimensional action mm -hmm. into your consciousness once again because you've forgotten about it. And it's just another level of the game. When, when you say this, this, this understanding the story... Or, or understanding that you know the Anunnaki are playing with you, or that there right. are other species that are playing with you, sure. that helps you to integrate some of the galactic issues. Mm -hmm. It helps you to create more cohesion between dimensions, mm -hmm. because right now the perception and some of the things that have gone on, there is a bit of separation mm -hmm. going on between the dimensions. Um, it, it helps us open our hearts in a way because absolutely. We, we're we're now. Not as, uh, I mean, for myself, obtaining this information has definitely uh, made me more compassionate for not just what I can physically see and, uh, and hear and using my five senses, but just all around uh, with, you know, just to know that there's more going on <laughs> in, in life than what's here has made me feel more. Yes, and it's, it's helping you to open up to the fact that you're not alone in mm -hmm. the galaxy. It's helping you to remember to work in it dimensionally. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of ways that it's serving you, which is part of why that story 
is unfolding in mm-hmm. a sense. So what we often recommend for many of you as you start to access this information is to pay special attention to how you feel mm-hmm. personally. What happens? Do you go into contraction? Does your body shut down? Do you feel triggered around authority, manipulation, control, trust? Because everything that gets played out interdimensionally or your your fears around interdimensional connection are the same fears that you're playing out with other human beings. Mm -hmm. So you use this reflection of what's going on in collective consciousness, whatever you're seeing or picking up, as a mirror for what you're playing out in your own personal life. Mm -hmm. So use it as such Mm -hmm. because that's what's going to empower you. Mm-hmm. because those beings aren't really controlling you in the way that you think it's happening. What you do as a creator being is say, all right, I want to play victim for a while, so I'm going to hand you a bit of my power. I'm, I'm going to give you the illusion that you've got power over me right. so I can understand this frequency and so I can own up to running more of my own power. Mm-hmm. That is the thing that you all are the most afraid of on this planet is being a divine being and running your full power. Mm. You're terrified of it. That sucks. I know. I, it's, <laughs> you know, I've just, I try to imagine if everybody knew they were these infinite beings, what kind of world would we be living in? It's... Well, you'd be playing a different game. Yeah. So, you know, that was part of the setup of the game. What if we could forget that? Right. So you're just working your way back up. And, and really, this is the exciting part of the game. Yeah. This is the part that you came for. It's not about knowing what it's like to be a fifth dimensional being. Mm-hmm. It's about you understanding, how do I go through this process? How do I integrate? How do I release judgment? Mm-hmm. That's the part that you came for. Mm. And if you can remember that, it will make being in this period much easier mm-hmm. because many of you are seeking that energy of um, flee, fleeing. You want to you run. Right. You want to get out. You want to be on the other side because right. you want it to be nice. Right. Well, it can be nice. It's about you shifting that frequency here, having more gratitude, mm-hmm. having more love. And that all starts internally. You have to establish that connection inside of you in order to start creating it as your reflected reality. Because everything outside of you is nothing but a reflection. If you try to change the reflection, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You have to change the generator of the frequency, which is you, that's creating that as a reality. So, I guess, again, I'm, uh, my mind, just going into my mind, which I probably shouldn't. But. It's all right. Well, you, that's the tool right. that you have. Yeah. Um, so these, uh, again, I, I, no offense to the Anunnaki. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to keep picking you as, a, as, a, um, as the escape go here. But um, we know they reside, you just mentioned they reside in the fourth and even fifth dimension. And to, to get into that frequency you'd have to have a certain awareness of how things work. Yes. Um, so even, I guess what, what blows my mind is these, we, we call them higher dimensional beings, but, and I know you explained that that doesn't necessarily mean they're better than us, but um, they have more awareness than here on the third d- density, um, but yet they still choose uh, a controlling uh, pattern or I guess what, in my mind, what seems like a negative experience. Yes. Um, and I guess my mind has a really hard time wrapping, like, why would you, why would anybody in their right mind choose to, to be manipulative or, or, or have uh, these kinds of tendencies when, uh, especially when you understand the bigger picture? Well, this goes back to the compassion piece. Mm. So think about it this way. They don't run the same emotional programming. So they don't feel and process in the same way that you do. Mm -hmm. To them, it's a bit more clinical. It's a bit colder. And they also understand they have they have more of an understanding of the technical aspect of how things are created. But they don't have necessarily the heart aspect. The ability to to really resonate in that heart center the way that you do. Mm -hmm. This is what's unique about humanity and this is why, you know, it's key in changing the universal game. Mm. So, because you understand what that strife feels like, that challenge feels like, you have a lot more compassion and are 
more often than not, likely not to engage with it or have more um, sympathy or empathy for those who are going through that lower frequency. So you're not going to keep putting yourself in that role of perpetrator. Right. And they also are working more with their external technology as opposed to their internal technology. And that's part of what you all are re-accessing is learning how to use your internal technology, how to access source energy from within. Mm -hmm. A lot of that's been forgotten, not to the extent that it has been forgotten with some of the other species in the galaxy. Some mm -hmm. of it has been become very mental and been very external. So for them, and when we're just talking about a few of the Anunnaki, we're not talking about all of them again. It has become, uh, there is still a level of separation in how they're choosing to perceive. Um, and this is more with the fourth dimensionals. The fourth dimension, you can run more 3D programming or you can run 5D programming on the 4D matrix. I see. You needed an entire dimension in order to come down through the game of dissension mm -hmm. as well as come up. And the Third D, the 3D has very fixed rules to the game, a separation or the illusion of it, right. linear time, uh, you're processing one version of reality at a time, and in the fifth dimension, you understand that you're a creator being, you can perceive yourself from the individuated or collective level, mm -hmm. uh, you understand that you're the creator of your reality by the frequencies that you pulse and what's reflected back, mm -hmm. and in 4D, you move back and forth between them, sometimes you'll play 3D out, um, running the old programming and then occasionally you'll put yourself in your heart center and perceive things from that 5d level but you can't maintain it mm. and you go back to the old programming I see. and eventually you'll be able to hold that higher resonance and at that point you shift into the fifth dimensional uh, perspective but mm. it's you know it's um as we said, it's not all a utopia in the higher dimensional right. realms, and you all think it is. Mm, yeah. And what you're moving to into isn't about bliss. It's not moving into this completely blissed out, say, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can. You can stay there. But frankly, at the soul level, we get bored. Right. And so we create... Drama. <laughs> yes. We create scenarios. We create puzzles in which right. to find our way out of. Right. And this is in part what they have done. Um, we would also say for those that are struggling with mm. the idea of those controlling and manipulating events, mm -hmm. know that they've been doing it for a very, very long time. Some of them have had very long lifespans. Right. They're frankly, at the soul level, getting a little bored. All right, so they've been playing this role. As, so let them out of the box, as right. it were. See them as also wanting to grow and change during this universal game, mm -hmm. that they have been holding that illusion of the perpetrator for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And think about it, how it must feel to have all of that negative energy constantly thrown at you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel so great. Yeah, no, they, they got to, especially if they, they've been doing it for so long, they, it's time to, you know, Cut loose a little bit. Have some fun. It, well, it, you know, to have some love. <laughs> yes. And, and at the soul level, there is part of them that, that knows that. Mm -hmm. um, there is part of them, you know, even within the game that they're playing, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, you know, how much power can I amass? Right. Uh, and, and I'm looking for no, more stimulus. I'm looking right. for more. So let them out of the box because right. they are at the, at the core the same as you. They are divine source energy. Absolutely. So send them love and appreciation for all that they have done in holding that end of the spectrum for the game. Absolutely. That does two things. One, it helps them to grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. And two, it lets you open to love as opposed to you shutting down your frequency because you're angry. Right. And all that anger does is punishes punishes your own body. Right. It doesn't it doesn't resolve anything. Right. And you're never really angry with anyone else. You're always angry with self. Mm -hmm. And it's always about you denying yourself as a divine being of light. You are upset with yourself for denying your own divinity. Mm -hmm. And so it's allowing yourself to forgive yourself for playing in that illusion and forgiving others for right that perceived uh, role that they are playing as well. Well, the, the, I guess the other thing that blows my mind with these, these other beings that are, you know, whether they're in the fifth dimensional, fourth dimensional, they, just like Atlantis, aren't they going to see that eventually they're going to self-destruct? When you're in that mentality, 
everything is finite. You have control. You try to have control and, and, and mass as much as you can. But then, eventually, it, it, it's uh, the serpent eating his tail. It, it ends up, yes. you know, self-destructing. Where, uh, you know, we're we're learning now that we can have an ecosystem where everything does coexist. And uh, yes, but from that level of consciousness, don't you play that out here? Don't you? Aren't you all still there yourselves? Yes, m most of us. That's why it blows yes. my mind that people still well, they play are there. Out, but. Yeah, and and they they have to some extent, you know, moments, mm -hmm. but it is very much the same thing when you when you get into the lower frequencies of any dimension. Mm -hmm. It is denser. If you go to the higher extremes of fifth dimensional living, mm -hmm. yes, it's much much easier than the lower dimensional in a sense. You don't have, again, those kinds of extremes. But where most of them are standing in the fourth dimension, mm. um, yeah, they're still locked into some of that control because they haven't fully opened themselves up to love. They haven't mm. opened themselves up to source energy, so they're not able to heal. Um, they have an understanding, a technical understanding of how um, things work. And so things have worked for a very long time on the planet, the mm -hmm. way that they've been behaving. And so they're just going to keep trying and hoping that you don't succeed in raising your frequency so that the game right. can continue. And if it doesn't continue on this planet, it can continue on another planet. Sure. You know, the universe is infinite in its planetary bodies that there are to explore. Right. right. So, you know, for, for part of that mentality, they have the idea that it's not just about this planet Earth. There are other planets that they can go and have gone and right. utilized and exhausted and then moved on. They did the very thing with their own planet. They did the very thing with Mars. Mm. And so, um, you know, they also have been been busy on other planets in your solar system and other dimensions. There's lots going on in your solar system. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's how long can we continue this before the jig is actually up? Right. We're going to go for as long as we can, and that's where they're at. It's almost getting so obvious now that there is only one way for our survival to, to, uh, to have compassion. Otherwise, we're just going to self-destruct. And Earth will go on with or without you. Sure. So, you know, it's, it's not so much you're doing it for her. Right. Uh, she will once again regain balance. But it's, it's understanding, you know, your connection with everything and living in harmonious balance mm -hmm. with the whole. And we always say drama happens when you're not paying attention mm -hmm. to get your attention. Right. So you are seeing more and more extremes. This is also expected as you are raising and elevating your consciousness. Mm -hmm. The reason we say that is as you start projecting and working with higher frequencies, anything that is unlike that frequency starts to come up so that it can be integrated so that you can maintain that higher frequency. Right. So again, we'll take you back to the idea of duality where you have you know light and dark. You have them in equal measure in the dualistic um, paradigm. Mm -hmm. So as you have lighter frequencies, you will also create some that are even darker mm -hmm. so that you have that sort of balance. Um, so, and that is also in part why you might be seeing things progressing and people waking up, but you're mm -hmm. also seeing some really lower vibrational mm -hmm. behaviors going on. Yeah. And again, it just helps so that the collective can see and the collective can make change. Mm -hmm. And again, we direct you back to your own personal life. What is going on in your life that is drawing that scenario to your attention? Mm -hmm. We guarantee if something is in your field, even if it seems completely unrelated to your life, mm -hmm. meaning uh, you hear a news story, something that's going on in, in Africa mm -hmm. or something that's going on in Asia, right. and you think, well, I'm not really over there creating that, there is a part of you that is in resonance. Otherwise, that information would not even cross your mind. Absolutely. You wouldn't know about it. So yeah. when you become conscious and are really grounded and present in the moment, you can observe that. Why have I brought that in? You know, if you're walking down the street and... You know, there are all kinds of things going on in the street, but it may be that you're aware of an argument going on. Well, that is part of your creation because you are in resonance with it. Otherwise, it would not be in your field of perception at all. Right. So there is something for you to observe in that moment. Where do I play out that frequency in my now? You don't have to know all about past lives or future lives. Um, we often get asked that, you know, am I integrating something from a past life? Is this karmic? It doesn't matter. 
Right. You carry those fields, uh, those records in your energetic field. And as you have a vibrational experience in the now moment, if it is the same frequency that you have in a future or a past life, that lifetime starts to vibrate. Mm -hmm. So the amplitude goes up, the volume goes up. Right. And, and it gets your attention. So everything that you think you've done in a past life or a future life, look to the now moment and say, where am I playing that out now? And you can shift it now. As you shift, clear, and integrate now, and what we mean by integrate is release judgment. As you drop your judgment about it, you actually help to heal that other lifetime because that information gets sent out to that other aspect of you who then has an opportunity, if they wish, to open and run that program. All right, think about it like a computer. It's like being sent an email attachment and, you know, that, that can be opened or they can simply save the file if they say, mm, you know, I feel like I want to really focus here and now, so I'm going to save that for later. And if I can't get it, then maybe I'll go and access that information later. But I want to try and do it now. You all are very... Um, you all are very excited and willing mm -hmm. to really work through the puzzle on your own. Right. That's where your sense of satisfaction often comes from for yep. you. If somebody put all the puzzles, you know, puzzle pieces in place, it's not as exciting as you get to figure it out, the discovery for yourself. Yeah. Totally went not too far off from where I was thinking, but I think this, thank you, this information is uh, vital and important to kind of set the, set the groundwork so hopefully in the future we can have some more conversations. Well, you know, we, we know that there are many other questions and there is a there's distinct reason why we choose to really talk about time and, and multiple realities because if you don't understand that, right. you're at a loss with the other information. Yep. You still get stuck in victim-perpetrator mode. Yes. So that's why we, we often break it down and take you back. Um, so... You know, we wanted to make sure that we included that in it for no other purpose than for you, just to help remind you of that as you move forward. You know, truth, uh, you know, when you ask for history and you ask what's gone on in, in the universal or even in the galactic game, mm -hmm. it's always based on perspective. And history has been so manipulated on your planet mm -hmm. that for many of you, as you're seeking your truth about what history is, you are not going to find it outside of you. Mm -hmm. You are going to have to go inside to get the records for yourself. And the records will change based on the frequencies that you need and your level of comprehension. Because some of this, you know, it involves interdimensional relationships. Mm -hmm. And for most of you, you're, you're in your little box and it's too much and it will shatter the version of your reality. So you will take on a story or a bit of history that you can digest. Right. You know, it's the proverbial telling a story to a kindergartner and then giving the advanced, you know, story to the PhD right. student. So um, it's it's about your own inner development. Sure. And you've got to go inside to get that information and take what resonates as your own personal truth, and that will change. Many of you are afraid of changing your mind mm -hmm. to say, well, you know, Last week, this is what I thought, and this week, I don't think that anymore. Right. And you're afraid to talk about it with other people. And this goes back many times to past lives and persecution mm -hmm. or other lifetimes and persecution. But all of you are growing and changing, so your perception of the truth is also going to grow and change. Your opinions and what you think is real and not real is also going to change. But the mental component of you, the traditional societal value is that if you are changing your mind all the time, you're wishy-washy and you don't know what you're talking about. You're not grounded and rooted. Right. But in fact, it is your own evolution. Right. So this is in part why many of you won't talk about it. Or if you do talk about it, it's hard for you to change so rapidly sure. because you think, you know, I'm, I don't know what I'm speaking about. Right. Well, you do in the moment and mm -hmm. that's all that matters. Excellent. Thank you for helping lay the groundwork. It's, uh, I think that's very important. So. Well, you know, we're happy to answer questions for you. And, you know, we'll tell you this, uh, you know, if there's information that you want outside of this film session, we're happy to, to supply you with that, to facilitate it, because 
um, you're going to bring a new perspective to, to many people. And we're very excited about what you have to offer in your own point of service. You've got a huge uh, group to support you. So they are also asking, while well, we have this opportunity, that we're, we're telling you that they're there to be of support to you. Ask them for it. Thank you. They're a huge resource for you uh, and for your own history, your own bits and pieces of information that you're going to get. And then from that, you will formulate your questions to get another perspective. But there's a lot that your own group has to share with you, awesome. uh, more than you could possibly imagine. And so it's just about, you know, it's like going to a friend who's got the best opinion. Right. <laughs> and some of them you'll take, some of them you won't, which ones are in resonance. But what's great about that is that for all of you, as you talk it out, mm -hmm. uh, you're able to bring some of what seems very ethereal mm -hmm. into the denser reality uh, by speaking or writing. Mm -hmm. And this is why, often why we suggest it for many of you. So, um, you know, as you're talking about it, whether it's with your guides and you're writing it out or with a friend, it can bring clarity and help you to formulate new questions. Absolutely. All right, so we... we we're excited to see what you create, dear one. Well, thank you, and thank you for, for uh, being available to answer these questions. Very important for, for myself and whoever's going to be watching this. It's our pleasure. Thank you.